How's it going my friend Surtech20 here. This is a follow-up video to the video that I showed each individual part in. Um, the computer's right there. It's all put together. It's got Windows 8 on it and it's fully updated and everything else. I just have to do a few things for a sound card and the mixer that he's using. That's pretty much the main last step that I have to deal with is finding a sound card that's going to make his mixer work with everything, you know, his microphone and everything else. So, um, but I have a pictures folder here that I kind of just want to, it's like a picture guide showing you guys just the little steps that I did to put the computer together. So, uh, let's go ahead and start with this one. It's the, pretty much just putting the case down on the side, getting it ready for the motherboard. There's one thing about the board that I use with this though, is if, um, you're going to use that particular board I used with this and you're going to want to use all these fans. You're going to want a fan controller, so I, I'm probably going to have to end up getting a one for all of those fans because the top fan right here is not actually plugged into the motherboard because there's only three plugs for fans. Because I had to use the one for the pump on the Corsair H90 and then one for the fan on the radiator. So, the next picture, just obviously showing the motherboard for the first time, that's actually a better picture than the one that I took with it in the case. So, because there's a fan, or fan, there's a plug right there for a fan, one right there, where exactly is the other one? That's power fan, that's what I use for the CPU pump. There's one right, yeah, then there's one right there, which I use for the fan on the radiator, so that's pretty much all the, all the fan connectors on here, so a fan controller is going to likely definitely be needed. Likely, definitely. But anyway, here's it in the uh, case itself, so it's nothing really fancy, but the one thing that I, I'm debating on having to do, the IO shield, how it's got those little metal pins for the, um, let me see, yeah, right here. <laughs> those little metal pins right there, and sorry for the fact that this is a blurry picture, but remove those before you put the fucking motherboard in. Yeah, I didn't, and I ended up having to kind of take my finger, grab them, bend them, and break them off. That way you can actually push some of the stuff into the I.O. shield like it's supposed to be. That way you don't have this issue right here where it looks like the stuff isn't actually seated properly. Yeah. And yeah, the little 6-core AMD processor. Most of this is just for my friend. That way he can see, like, the process that I went through. And you guys shouldn't be able to hear the furnace that just came on, hopefully because of the audition thing, but we'll find out. Um, and yeah, there's a picture with it installed. Um, I had to remove these right here, these little bracket things on each side. That's because that's for like a stock heatsink, the pathetic excuse for a heatsink that comes with the CPU. And uh, yeah, I had to end up or taking those off, so, and that's just a... The picture back with the, the two terabyte storage hard drive installed for them. I just, I love the way that this case is so much. I mean, it offers you so much extra room just for expansion, like in the future if you need it. Unless, of course, you get a huge ass fucking EATX board, which I think comes out to about right here. So, yeah. Then there's a picture with the, the Corsair H90 mounted in there. The way I did that, I was going to have the fan on the bottom of it, but I just. I don't know, I just didn't want the fan on the bottom of it, so you have to take off the top part of the case, obviously, and there's just two screws in the back of the case that come out, then you just put your hand on top of it and you just pull back and then lift right up, it comes off really easy, but I just screwed down through the top of it, or through the fan and into the radiator, so that was pretty good. And this next one is showing that I took out those brackets that I should, or talked about earlier, because you, ha you have to take that out, the back plate off of the motherboard. And put the little one on for the H90. And right there's the whole, yeah, that's the bracket things you have to take off. And this is what the back plate looks like. It's really heavy, but, you know. And that's just showing the small one that comes with the H90. I mean, it is it is light compared to the one that's usually on the motherboard. And then this is just me showing another picture of the fact that I have the, you know, the, the block itself. Or the cooler mounted onto the CPU. I love the way it looks. Just... I love that, like that, the, I don't know, it just, for some reason it doesn't, I don't know, kind of like the way it looks better on AMD systems than I do on Intel systems, 
It could be just me, but that just I just love how nice that looks. Then the next picture is pretty much the same thing, except the fact that it shows that I have the RAM installed. As again, I mentioned, this is like a step-by-step, -step. okay, I do this, take a picture of it, do this, take a picture. Because he's never seen this process before. So, and yeah, right there showing that I have the, oh, I have the, oh, I take that back. I have the fan from the radiator plugged into the CPU one, and then the pump plugged into that one. Okay. And then the NZXT power supply. I probably could have got a better picture of that, but that power supply, oh, I love just. I just love the sleek and just the clean look of it, you know, none of the LED shit that lights up, it's just straightforward. And this is just showing that I got the, one of the SATA things plugged in. I believe that that's for the 2 terabyte hard drive, then I got the power cable going. That was tough to get in, just because of the fact that, that's one thing with this power supply that bugged me, was the fact that uh, the cables didn't want to bend, granted they're new. But um, it was it was a bitch getting that power cord, and then I had to kind of hold or put my hands behind the board to kind of support it while I was pushing it in. And you can see that I have the eight pin CPU power connector plugged in. Also, um, do I have the? Yeah, I believe I have this bottom pin right here connected right there, and this right here is the one that just I can't connect. Then having the power supply in, I don't quite remember if I had the SSDs installed in here at first. The cable management looks pretty decent right now. Just because there's not much to it and I was able to just zip tie shit. That scared shit out of me. I was able to zip tie shit just because the, um, what was it that's right there? Oh, the other, uh, like the other, oh, let me see, I'll go back. This one right here, since we don't have another 2 terabyte hard drive, we're just a platter based hard drive to put right here. He's not going to use this yet, or at all as I know of. So I just decided to zip tie this on bitch up to kind of save space. Then as you can see, after I plug in the SSDs, it, yeah, went from being, oh, it looks pretty good to just, <laughs> and the one thing that, that pissed me off about these cables is, uh, especially the SATA power cables and stuff, they do not like moving. Like, if you had, like, a really tight fit, like, when you go to plug it into, like, if two S, like, if the SSDs, the way I had them at first, they were, um, let me see, they were... You know, just one and then the next one right underneath each other. And the way that that, uh, way that I had that, the pressure from it almost cracked the power, or the, the power connector on the SSD. It almost cracked the little corner piece because of the tension from them being so close and those wires not being willing to bend or, you know, give you any leeway. So I had to move the SSD down one spot. So it's like SSD, nothing, and then SSD. It wasn't nothing major, but it just, it was an annoyance to me that just, the fact that the cables refused to work with me. And there's the little video card. That, I like that. that it's not a crazy, you know, out spec like a GTX 7 or 970 would be, but I like it. It's, it's nice. And there's just a picture showing that I have the SSD installed, or the <laughs> SSD, the graphics card. And then those two, uh, I wonder if I can zoom in on this bitch. Whoa. Well, those two top ones right there, the SATA cables that are in the two top ones right there, those that's for the SSDs that I rated. And the one below that's obviously for the two terabytes, so. Yeah. I don't think there's anything else in the picture that would be of interest. Then this right here is just, it was just the whole, okay, it works. <laughs> that's always the, the most nerve-wracking part to me, even though I've built, I, I've lost count of how many computers I've put together since I started, you know, messing around with computers, and it's always the most nerve-wracking part for me. Getting it put together is the easy, you know, that's, that's whatever, it's nothing. Hitting that power button for the first time and hoping that everything turns on, that the memories are recognized right, the CPU's working just right, and as you can see right there, total memory size, well, you won't be able to see it the greatest just because my camera was retarded and refused to, you know, focus properly, and the light on the screen is kind of funky, but... It says 16 gigabytes, well, 16,000 megabytes, 16 gigabytes, 3.5 gigahertz for the CPU frequency. V cores are like 1.3. The so AMD CPUs, any AMD CPU I've worked with within the past year or two, they've always had high voltages. And anytime I attempt to fuck with them to bring them down a little bit, it just it results in blue screens or BIOS resets. So I just like, you know what? 
the damn thing, I think it was running at like 20, I think it's 20 Celsius, so I was like, yeah, that, that's good, that's, that's fine, so, and then this right here is just showing the, the fact that I had the two 120s rated together, so it's ready for his operating system, this was actually a bit of a bitch for me to get into, because since I don't, I'm mostly an Intel guy, so I don't really mess with AMD a lot, and, uh, the way I was going to go into the BIOS, according to the manual, it wanted me to switch something to Windows 8, like for the OS type, and then select or set another option to never, <clears throat> and then use commands to get into the bi or the RAID BIOS. And I was like, "What the? F no, I'm not doing that." And then I found out that you just press Control F at a certain part while it's posting and doing everything to get into this. So after I did that, it was fine. And then that right there is a picture I took just before I started this video just to you know, show you. That's what it looks like. So, it's it's running really good. I mean, the speeds, actually, let me see. Give me a second here. Um, fuck. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I need to find the fucking picture. <laughs> but uh, it is in my photos now. It, it, right here. The... Yeah, this right here is the speed test that I did with that ASSD benchmark program. Well, as you can see, ASSD. Um, the thing that annoyed me is I was actually going to try to update the firmware or check to see if the SSD needed a firmware update due to the fact that there's a different, you know, pretty big chunk of difference between the write and the read speeds on sequential and even in the, the read and write. But even on my SSDs, and I have two Samsung 840 Pros for my games rated together, the 256 gigs each. And my results, obviously, they're higher speeds because it's a lot, you know, more expensive of a hard drive, but it's obviously a better quality. And, um, but to me, in, my, in all honesty, this, compared to what he's coming from, I'm pretty sure if you ran this kind of a test on the hard drive that he's got now, I'm, all, I'm almost guaranteeing you none of these would even come close to 20 megabytes a second at all. So just seeing that he, you know, almost 900 megabytes reading, 555 megabytes for write that's crazy compared to what he has right now so that's I'm cool with that and I've ran this test multiple times even after updating windows and the drivers just to make sure that okay it wasn't a driver holding it back so I'm pretty sure it's just the uh, I myself actually think it's a SATA ports on the motherboard I mean you know it's because I switched out cables because I had some SATA 6 cables in the, the drawer that I have in the dresser over there like, okay, you know, maybe it's just the cables, because the motherboard only came with two cables, or a set of cables, which kind of pissed me off. But uh, I plugged those in, and he got maybe, uh, maybe 10 or 15 megabytes more from the read here, the right here, and then the read, the right was maybe two or three megabytes more. So it's, like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's the motherboard. Because I ran a test on my system, and the results that I got on mine, and remember, this is a, a much more expensive setup. It's with a Asus X99 Deluxe, two Samsung 840 Pros rated, and you know, just all, all out. It's it's a more expensively put together system and everything. So those are. Let me do this this way. Really, you dick fuck. Yeah, those are, yeah, his system, and then there's mine. But, you know, again, it's a different system, a much more expensive system, you know, than what his was. So, I sent these to a friend, and he's like, well, that's a big difference, especially in the 4K to the 64 third, you know, the third test. Like, well, yeah, it's, that's, you know, it's going to happen. There's sometimes, you know, price on a part is going to help determine how much better it performs. So, but, you know, yeah. Um, but for what he's got, this is really good. So, I'm happy with it. And the funny thing is, I installed a video program he uses. He had the CD for it, and it was, like, from 2005. And I was like, oh, great, okay, this isn't going to work. Windows 8's going to bitch. Okay, this isn't compatible with this OS. No problem. Installed like nothing. Like, oh, that makes my job a bit easier. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty much all I wanted to go ahead and show you guys was, you know, the fact that, okay, it's put together now, so I just have to get, end up getting a sound card for his mixer. I don't even want to know why you just decided to do that. 
So, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to go and show you guys in this video. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's kind of different. I've stretched out the camp thing just so you can see my Smexy microphone. And then the PC thing in the background right here. You know, just so it's not just, you know, this. Just so you're not focusing on all this handsomeness. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And Bruce, if you're seeing this, I hope that you enjoyed those pictures, man. You're going to love this fucking system when you get this thing hooked up. First time you hit that power button, it's going to boot up the windows in like under 15 seconds. You're going to click shit and it's going to be boom. And you're going to no longer be walking around the house for 20 minutes doing shit while you wait for something to load. So... With that being said, I thank you guys again for watching the video. If you liked it, go ahead and give me a little thumbs up. Comment below if you'd like to. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.